Christopher Peterson, and you're listening to the Nerd EXP Podcast. Today I have the pleasure of hanging out with Guillermo Drew, and your last host, <laughs> <laughs> not Don Cheadle. Not Don Cheadle. <laughs> if you're uh, coming back, you get that reference. If not, <laughs> I'm sure we'll say plenty of things that you will get. Uh, this week, we're going to go through all the headlines coming out of San Diego Comic Con. Uh, that's pretty much going to be topic of the week, headlines, and full discussion. Uh, the point of all this to start a conversation. <laughs> if you want to be part of that conversation, you can email us at nerdexp at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter or Facebook, just like one of our listeners, Alita, did. Her question is if we could cosplay as any character, who would we be and why? And I know she said if. But the answer is yes, you have to cosplay. Somebody's forcing you, so no cop-outs. Uh, for me, I don't know why. I've always wanted to go as Nightwing. Like, grown up, Dick Grayson, you know, Robin grows up, becomes a darker, broodier character. So kind of lighthearted. Feels like it'd be an easy costume. It's mostly black and, like, has some coloring. If I had any sewing capabilities, uh, I'd be capable of doing it. Based off my body type, I should be cosplaying as, like, Mario or like a Ninja Turtle, <laughs> like kind of built-in shell. So, <laughs> uh, what do you got for us, Guillermo? Um, so I had a couple ideas on this one, but you know, something that I absolutely hope that someday I get to do is a Power Rangers costume done right. I would <laughs> love to be inside the White Ranger Mighty Morphin costume, just done completely right, putting that helmet on and just owning it. That would be choice number one. And another one that I actually contemplated doing for a, a Halloween party at some point, White Goodman from Dodgeball. That was Ben Stiller's <laughs> character. Okay. I'd never seen anybody do it. And I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, sometimes they say, you know, you look like Ben Stiller at times. You know, when I was younger, people used to say that. Like, my family used to say it. They might be lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> but when Meet the Fockers came out, when Meet the Fockers came out, and there was the bastard child... Oh, Via Lobos. Okay. okay. My parents used to, or you know, family used to make fun of it uh, because of it. That but that would be, He does not <laughs> In fact, confirm. So that would be my choices. But I, I think if I had the uh, budget, I would just buy a perfect White Ranger outfit. White Ranger, like Ninja Power Rangers. Dude, like no, make no, it both. Be, make it the both. First movie. <laughs> those, ninja, those ninjas are pretty cool. You would be the I mean, frog. This is, this is a full weekend con. So he can do a different suit every time. <laughs> There's three. <laughs> he would be the frog from the ninja. The frog. The, the frog was the black ranger. Oh, whatever. I mean, the falcon. Sorry about that. Whatever. Come on, man. Whatever, man. It's, it starts with an F. I'll be right. next. I could because I actually... Because I just got silly. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm definitely I, I figured too. Guillermo was because mine is also Power Ranger related. But I've always wanted to do um, either the Megazord or Ooh. the um, Tyrannosaur Zord. And I think, like, and not, like, cardboard, like, real PVC, something shiny, and more along the lines of the Megazord, but the only reason I thought the, ty- the Tyrannosaur Zord would be good would be because of the tail. I could, like, hit people with it and have a little, um, no, that's the Dragon Zord. <laughs> <laughs> that would be another cool one, but I don't know. I always want to go with, like, original series Megazord. Slash Tyrannosaurus or something. That sounds excellent. That's a good out of uh, out of pocket. It would yeah. be really hot, though, <laughs> and I sweat very easily. Yeah, but most cons are indoors, so you'll be fine regardless. Yeah, I have to have a fan system inside. If, like, yeah, if you're gonna have a mobile you know, tail, might as well have an AC unit inside of it as well. Uh, I would never take that one, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> that was all yours. Uh, being that I'm a big fan of Superman, I would I would love to be a cosplay of Bizarro. Uh, Bizarro was always so like fascinating to me, coming from the square earth and having like all the opposite powers of Superman, and I, I just love Bizarro's like backwards S and purple. That that's what that, that's what I would cosplay. And I don't see that very often, but I like Bizarro. That's, that's a really choice. bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I was speaking of Bizarro, which means yeah. that I thought it was actually a really good idea. <laughs> You were going to annoy people all day when you talk like that. Uh, I don't think any of us really hit on why. I mean, maybe we kind of did. Why? Because we like it. Because we yeah, like those properties. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, we can talk about, about it. I mean, enjoy. Yeah, I mean, Bizarro, it's really cool. I really like them. 
And he likes because the tail. Would... <laughs> <laughs> he does like the tail. He likes the tail. <laughs> he likes the people who will point at you and be like, that costume's awesome, man. Can I take my picture with you? Yes. Yes. And then swap him with the <laughs> tail. You've been here too long. <laughs> so coming out of uh, Comic-Con, a lot of news. Uh, starting off with television, The Legend of Korra, this is uh, the Avatar Airbender sequel, is getting pulled from Nickelodeon. So it's on its third season. It's uh, critically well received. Fans love it. But not even getting pulled from Nickelodeon. Nick Tunes, is that correct? From physical aired with commercials television. Okay, gotcha. And then Nickelodeon was quick to say they're going to air it online. So it's going to go from standard media to being aired online. Uh, I think this is a death nail for the show. I mean, they keep saying like the creators, like, oh no, we still have ideas, we still have concepts. Um, I think this show is done with. I mean, what are you guys' thoughts? If not on this show directly, just kind of the whole move of community and you know shows transitioning from television to digital. Uh, we've seen success with Netflix originals like The Orange Is New Black and my personal favorite like House of Cards. I know community is going into digital as well. We'll see. I mean, House of Cards has plenty has, has plenty of Emmy and Golden Globe nomination. So does New, Orange Is New Black and. But that's where they started. I mean, these are places that, you know, I, you know, started on TV and now they're going to die yeah. mm-hmm. on digital format. And I think, it, I really do say, like, this uh, Avatar deal or Night of Korra. Yeah, Legend of Korra. <laughs> Legend of Korra. I'm not listening. You're at not going to watch it. <laughs> that's right. Uh, the whole deal with that, to me, it feels like, all right, we, they made way too many episodes. You know, the budget's already there. Just finish them up. We'll polish them somehow. We'll get some, you know, we don't have to worry about ratings. We can do something else online. All you really have to pay for is storage. And you're getting paid, you know, from somebody for sponsorship. So, uh, to me, that, that that's the sequence. You know, let, let's say if they were going to announce Orange is the New Black is now going to be a TV series, you know, on actual TV. That, to me, would be the same thing, death. For it because now we're so used to seeing this thing, no commercials, getting a whole season at once, and then to make that transition, I don't think that transition works, and I don't think we've seen it work for anything yet. I, I agree with you. Know, I mean, this uh, rest of development season four was atrocious, and you know maybe the time delay hurt them as well. Yeah, but you know the, the change in format, the change in like production, just kind of the mindset, I think, was not good for the product or for fans, and I just think we'll get a similar. You know, half budgeted product when these shows transition from NBC to Yahoo or Nickelodeon proper to Nick.com. Yeah. Uh, what I don't think is going to be half assed will be uh, Guardians of the Galaxy TV show. Uh, it's going to be a new animated show that Disney's putting together. They're going all in with Guardians. Uh, movie, you know, is currently getting some great pre buzz. And I think that, you know, we're just going to see the Space Avengers get a total blitz. That's that's crazy to me that they're, you know, when I, when the Guardians of the Galaxy we first saw the first trailer, I thought, all right, here, here's something that's not going to be so geared towards kids. That was like my first impression. This is something for you know teenagers or grown ups to really enjoy as a superhero movie. I I thought it was more of like not satire, but definitely oriented towards you know a darker humor, um, and that caught my attention a lot. And, you know, I enjoyed that first trailer, watching it and watching it again. I think the first time I saw it, I was like, all right, that was weird. And then I rewatched it and rewatched it, and I just kept liking it more. Now when I'm hearing all this, you know, they're now going to be Legos. They're going to be part of an Infinity, you know, Disney Infinity video games. They're going to start showing cartoons on, on Disney. That, to me, it's taking a little bit of the attraction of the product. But, I mean, it's... It's marketing. I saw it, you know, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago at the theme parks. They're marketing it, you know, right at Disney. It's, I think that's the main reason. It's Disney is driving this thing to just sell. That's, that's what they, they do best, <laughs> right? That's what they do best. I don't mind it. I mean, good, good for them. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy are going to team up with, like, other Marvel enterprises. So that's cool for the kids. That's fine with me. I mean, Disney bought Marvel for... A billion dollars, and they bought them for a reason, and this is it. And we're just seeing the fruition come true. Uh, what I'm worried about is just quality, to be honest. Uh, Avengers was a good cartoon, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and then uh, it got canceled after the, the contract ended for Disney to put out Avengers Assemble. 
it's not as good. Spectacular Spider-Man was a great cartoon. It got canceled the second that this Marvel deal came together to come out with Ultimate Spider-Man. It is very slapsticky and childish and, you know, over the top. I think we're going to get the same thing with Guardians. And I, and I agree with Cameron. Like, this show, like this cartoon, you know, you might watch some cartoons. This is not geared towards you. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy the movie is, you know, a modern-day retelling of Star Wars. Like, you know, it has that space opera feel is what they're going for. This TV show won't. We're not the target audience. Do you think it's going to hurt it in the long run as far as, you know, part of the anticipation for a sequel, which already has been announced for Guardians of the Galaxy, is the fact that you have the movie and then you have nothing else to go by. Granted that you do have comic books and there's a storyline in the comic books. But over here, I, I, I feel that TV series are more accessible. To me, I think that's going to kill a little bit of the buzz. It's going to kind of kill that, you know, that... that that uh, angst to just wait for the next movie? I'm going to go with no, because Avengers has a cartoon, and we're still super excited about Age of Ultron. Superman vs. Batman, we're still seeing stuff come out left and right, and it had a cartoon that just recently got canceled because nobody cared to watch it. So I don't think that there's necessarily a dilution of interest in the movies, because I think that they do go to two different audiences at the end of the day. Star Wars has cartoons, and we're excited about Rebels. Yeah. I'm so excited about Rebels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Star Wars has had Clone Wars for the longest time. Yeah. Speaking of alternative versions, an alternative history regarding the introduction of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, kind of following the fallout after Captain America, is going to center around Agent Carter. This is uh, Peggy Carter, the female lead in the first movie. This show is going to air eight episodes in between Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s uh, kind of winter hiatus, and it's going to have a rotating cast of directors. It was just recently confirmed that the Russo brothers, who directed Captain America Winter Soldier, are going to do episodes two and three. Cool. Um, uh, I like that it's eight episodes. It feels very BBC-ish, where they pack more quality than quantity. I like the Russo brothers. Like I like their work on Community, and Winter Soldier was one of my favorite movies, like I mentioned uh, last week. So, I can't wait. Like, um, I need to catch up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. first. Nope. Nope, I don't need to catch up. <laughs> I, like, I like that um, that they're airing it in the winter hiatus. Because I, I don't watch too much TV, but I hate when they take a break like that. Man, I don't know when that started. Me. Like, why all of a sudden in the past couple of years, that's like, boo big deal. But um, it's kind of like a series like, I'd say, the, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. How every Friday they would show Zelda instead. And that's what I mean. It's not going to be like <laughs> one day out of the week, but me, but I like that. It's like it's like a little break from the main series. You get a little, a little something different, but but slightly related. I think that's cool. Uh, I'm reading here that Joe Johnson is also going to be directing some episodes. The fourth, he's going to he be directed directing the, the first Avengers. Who's directing the first one? Who knows? <laughs> the wait on all that. No, yeah. Why are they calling the, this, uh, the whoever directed the Marvel Espo- one shot? Desposito. No. Louis what? Desposito, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Louis yeah. on the spot. Yeah. Lu- I mean, Louis Louis Desposito. Desposito. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's the person who that, you know. created this, I guess. He did the Marvel one shot. That's Carter. what I did read about that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it was. That's all so we got a bunch of Captain America alumni coming in for the first four episodes. The cool thing about See this where it goes after cinematic that. universe again, and I think at some point we talked about that how this was being developed as a TV series. Yeah. And now it's I, I guess I'm I'm glad they're backing it up with a a good you know good good um, set of names instead of just saying you know no buzz about who's directing it or who's writing it. They're taking it seriously, so that's pretty pretty good. I am more likely to see this in uh, this year than I am Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield is a big letdown, Ooh. but I think this has like some good directorial choices. Eight episodes, I think they'll tell a tighter story. They won't meander around as much. Exactly, so they have uh, a lot of yeah. potential. One thing I don't care about uh, some, some minor spoilers, but this was kind of announced. They are going to have a human in Jarvis in this. It's going to be Howard Stark's Butler. What? Which, and it's not going to be Paul Bentley. So it's not like. Uh, Tony later takes that voice of Jarvis, but I guess a Stark always has to have a Jarvis, so... No kidding, that's... Uh, okay. So is it, like, whatever Tony Stark based his Jarvis off of was his father's butler? Watch and find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I guess we might get, be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but that was part of the Comic-Con Paul Bettany interviews 
you know, is there a tie or they're just gonna, you know, play it off like nothing happened? And apparently there is, you know, with Paul Bettany's new character, there is some kind of tie-in as to what relation he has to do with uh, with Jarvis. So mm. maybe, pretty- maybe Alfred will show up in uh, Batman vs Superman as the voice. As like a robotic voice for Batman. Well, well, Alfred's, definitely Alfred's in the He's movie. Definitely on it. It's uh, Jeremy Stark, Irons. Isn't it? yeah. yeah. No, but I'm, like his <laughs> voice, his voice will be patched into like Batman's little thing. Like like Jarvis isn't Iron Man. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Okay. <laughs> he does have a cool voice, Jeremy Irons. He's Scar. Moving on to comic news, <laughs> uh, the Eisners were announced this past Saturday. You probably don't know what they are. They're basically the Oscars of comic books. I'm not going to run through the whole list. Just going to point out some things that you know I've personally read and enjoyed. Uh, best single issue was uh, for Hawkeye number eleven by uh, Matt Fraction. Uh, this was uh, a silence piece told from the perspective of a dog. Um, the entire time, but there was a lot of uh, character art. Of a dog? Yeah. Uh, you know when he thought he thought in images. Um, okay. it, it was really well done. Like you have to understand the medium and to get a real piece of it. Uh, best continuing series was Saga by Brian K. Vaughn. Brian K. Vaughn. Um, when when Chris first sent out the agenda, uh, I looked through some of the nominees and winners, and Brian K. Vaughn was a name that popped out. He did a lot of Lost. Uh, he was the like one of the lead writers for Lost season three to five. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Best limited series, The Wake by Scott Snyder. Uh, Scott Snyder has done excellent work on Batman and American Vampire. I've been recommended to read The Wake pretty often, but I haven't yet, so that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Best new series, Sex Criminals, also by uh, Matt, Matt Fraction. So, I mean, he killed it this year. Uh, there is a guy and a girl who learned that when they orgasm, they freeze time. So what they do is they orgasm freeze time and go on like these criminal rampages and like steal stuff so it's a crazy premise and they sometimes have to orgasm mid heist <laughs> <laughs> to, to keep it going oh what is that Jason Statham movie where he has to order where he has to like in, oh, feel crank. like crank that was like a, that's like the crank the, that's the, crank the, three he's yeah, going to <laughs> orgasm yeah <laughs> nice uh, and, you know, just a ton of other awards were given out to, to a lot of talented people, colorists, inkers, uh, which are more than just tracers, um, <laughs> chasing Amy. Yeah. So definitely encourage you guys to check out the list and see everything you want. Any female uh, winners? Ooh. Um, I would have to look through. Can you guys uh, vamp? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything? Don't, don't put Chris on the spot like that. You, we we were ready. Uh, we were ready for this. Vivek, Rutu, Donald, Jeff. No females yet. That's Where's crazy. the media, man? <laughs> <laughs> Best painter and multimedia artist, Fiona Staples. There we go. Okay, I'm happy. Fiona Staples. <laughs> I hope you're a girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Japanese, you idiot. <laughs> uh, Sheena C. Howard won uh, Best Scholarly Academic Work. I think that's a female name. In comics? Yes. <laughs> comics can be... She illustrated the encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> and it was for Black Comics, Politics of Race and Representation. Right. I feel it. So. Do you want to ask me if any like Chinese people or people in wheelchairs? Are, are there any transsexuals like, in there? <laughs> I don't know. It seems that every time anything now comes about, there's like always that question. So I just wanted to uh, put it in there, man. We do have female listeners. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt that we have one female listener. Oh, now we just Alira. lost them. <laughs> Damn it, now we alienated them. Now we just lost them. Sorry, lady listener. <laughs> Sorry, lady. <laughs> Also for comics, uh, Star Trek and Planet of the Apes crossover was announced. Yeah, so that, that was an interesting uh, little side note during Comic Con. Uh, the, the, the fact that they made this announcement. This isn't the first time that they've done this. I don't think. I've seen pictures of this before, so I don't think. I think they did it back when uh, Star Trek was just a TV series and uh, Planet of the Apes had the. Uh, you know, with their, their existing movies. I think there was already a crossover, a crossover of the universes. 
I don't recall exactly how they explained it, but it's cool. I mean, the, the Take Two franchises who, that are somewhat popular now. Yeah, a lot of backstory. Resurging. All right, and then you know, probably both of them came about the, around the same time. So, uh, pretty interesting. And this is something that takes time. I mean, they, you know, when they announced this at Comic Con. They've already knew this for months. This is not like necessarily a knee-jerk reaction to the success of Don with the plane of the Apes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just good timing that Don did receive such great attention. That's it's cool. Good. Also coming out is uh, Multiversity. This is Grant Morrison's uh, kind of opus in the DC Universe. This has been, uh, comic book fans will know, kind of on the back burner for, I want to say three, four years. It's kind of finally coming to fruition. Um, at one point, the whole DC universe got rebooted. The cut calling of the new Fifty Two. Part of that was that there was Fifty Two universes, what? as opposed to an unlimited amount. We don't know most of them. This is going to flush out a, a good chunk of them. Um, kind of highlighted on the cover is a black Superman who's president of the United States, and also happens to look a lot like Barack Obama. No kidding. Uh-huh. Are you serious? <laughs> they never call him that, but I feel like it is definitely heavy, heavily inspired. Um, there'll also be some other alternate universes, uh, you know, some that fans might recognize, such as like the Shazam universe, uh, and then just you know a lot of new ideas coming out of this. So, what are you uh, like? What this means is, um, like, we'll have some story set in like Earth thirty two, or like some story set in Earth one. Yep. Okay, that's pretty cool. Because I, I kind of like those different alternate universes. I don't know about the whole Obama thing, but I do like, <laughs> like I do like um, um, some stuff I read about the Infinite Crisis. Like that's that's pretty cool. So uh, I I would like to see your takes on the, um, on the comic book stuff that's coming up soon about that. I was reading the other day about a Batman uh, that was. Jewish and in the World War II era fighting Nazis in Germany. Ooh. Which I thought was pretty interesting. And that's from the, I'm not say 70s or 80s. It's wow. weird. It's crazy. I mean, they I mean, come up with everything. I mean, it's comics. I mean, you know, unfortunately, some of the watch movies like, oh, it's very comic booky. Because, I mean, they'll, characters will die, get resurrected. Ooze will give them weird powers. Oh, they'll disappear to the time. And, oh, there's a vortex. And, your girlfriend forgot all about you, but she came back and you died um, and you got better. Poor Cyclops. <laughs> uh, speaking of comic book craziness, Marvel's uh, going to do an event called Spider Verse. It's a huge undertaking. What they are trying to do is literally every Spider Man they have ever printed will appear in this story. So, manga Spider Man, India Spider Man, uh, you know, Spider Man with six arms. To be a Ben Riley from the Clone Wars. Ah, cool. um, they said they have been on record that they can't get a hold of like five or six licenses due to copyright and trademark. I'm assuming that these are all like movies. Like they can't get Tobey Maguire Spider Man or the horrible Japanese Spider Man live action <laughs> show. Things along those lines. Um, I don't know. You guys don't necessarily read comic books, but any thoughts or. Uh, that would be cool because uh, I know that I, I played a little demo of the like, the, the Spider Man PlayStation game and it was cool to select all the different costumes and then that got me interested in like Spider Man twenty ninety nine or something like that's that's pretty cool I'd, I'd like seeing alternate alternate uniforms or alternate Spider Man's it's pretty cool it's very interesting that they're taking the time to do it so they're putting them all in one story together yep. I'm sure it was going to be more... It's like all the Red one. Rangers coming together. That's right. <laughs> they did do that. They did do that. And that was like the best episode. <laughs> it was a good episode. Uh, beyond the original yeah, series. Yeah, okay, <laughs> episode. Let's not call it the best episode. <laughs> Moving on to uh, games news. Uh, this one breaks my heart. No, tell me. I would say that Firefly might be my favorite television show of all time. I know it was only on for 14 episodes, and it's easy to say because it didn't have a chance to like, get bad and fizzle out. But I really enjoyed it. Firefly Online. This minute trailer looks like garbage. <laughs> really? Wow. And everything looks very polygony, like early 2000s, like brand new 3D. Like Sierra Games made this thing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like like Cruising USA. <laughs> Cruising 64. 64. Yeah. 
I mean, they show people... Uh, it's trying to do too much. It's trying to be this huge sandbox game. You can make a ship. Most people are making fireflies in the trailer. You can update your room, kind of like some city. You can get into fights and you know explore resources and fly. It's just its, it's scope is too large to actually focus on any one thing. And I don't mean that like in a Grand Theft Auto way, like, oh, the driving's not as great as uh, Gran Turismo and the shooting's not as good as Gears of War, but it's still an awesome game. This looks like it is a crappy mini game collection all combined into one world. Interesting. Is So, what was the announcement that the, all the original cast members were going to you know, make some kind of appearance into the video game? Yep. I, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, you're, you're, you're the Firefly person in, the, uh, in our group here. That's, that's actually interesting to hear. A lot of people, you know, there was so much buzz, but I guess it kind of kills the buzz whenever they back a product that's not up to par. I mean, I, I think Firefly is a lightning in a bottle for me. Like, I would yeah. not want that team to get back together and do a sequel. I, you know, I think it'd be like when poor Edgar had to sit through Rust Development Season 4. <laughs> <laughs> they had to green screen each other. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, Will Arnett, you're too big for, for anything now. <laughs> Screw you. Can oh, film? I didn't think that was awful, but. Well, I mean, it wasn't as the, good as the first three. Yeah, it's not as good. Downgrade. Yeah. It's like watching modern Seinfeld or something. Like, they're all they're all different now. Modern Seinfeld. <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I, I would try Firefly Online. Might just give it a shot. You would pay 50 bucks for something. Wait, it's 50 be... bucks? I'm, I'm not sure going to pay 50 bucks. I mean, well, what's on Well, it's coming out game? for the iPhone, isn't it? Like, iOS? So it's iPhone. Well, well, that explains the graphics. I, I would play it. I would play I would. <laughs> I would give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. But if it turns out crappy, then I'll... 20 bucks plus a $10 subscription. Will you try it? No. Absolutely no, not. That thing has to be free if they want me to try it. It's a kid on the way. He can't try that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, other game news, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Disney Infinity. We already touched upon that. Um, I'm sure any Disney property will be an Infinity product by 2016. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. That, you know, I really hope they you know, hide the quality of the... Uh, of the little figurines, it would be pretty cool to uh, own quite a few of those. But I think you know, I've seen a lot of missing arms, uh, faces, you know, you know, hanging off the the, the character. Um, and I mean, there's really they don't get much play other than just get the important. They're gonna look more cartoony it. too, because I've seen they do look more Jack regular. Sparrow is like the Disney Store Jack Sparrow, and not not. Not Pirates like, of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow. Maybe we'll get the grown-up version of Infinity sometimes. <laughs> we'll get real characters. That'd be pretty cool. It's meant for kids, though. Right. <laughs> oh, speaking of kids, Tyler, if you if you're listening, um, <laughs> I mean, I know, I, 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 I know, I mean, I know that you love Dinsey Infinity, so. Uh, if you have any feedback, give us some feedback, and we'll be happy to talk about it, like Dinsey Infinity, because I know that you purchase. Every week. Right. Now <laughs> the whole world knows. <laughs> now the whole three people know. <laughs> Two of them know Tyler. That's right. The girl never found out. <laughs> the girl never found out. <laughs> Moving on to movie news. Uh, Avengers Age of Ultron had a lot of announcements coming out of Comic-Con. Yeah. Okay. Do we just want to, I guess, Marvel? Sure. We'll go through a All bunch right, of Marvel let's, stuff. Let's, let's start in Avengers. So tell us, I guess, what, what, what happened. Uh, they aired a teaser trailer for people in San Diego Comic Con. Uh, they asked people not to film it. So I'm sure some people did. Uh, I saw some live tweets of a synopsis. I stopped reading it one, you know, after the two or three because I was like, I do not want to get into this. I'm sure everything will be on a actual trailer, but I kind of want to wait to see that instead of reading a synopsis. Yeah. So who was there at, at the panels? That was uh, yeah, everybody. 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 I think, I think the entire... Except Scarlett Johansson, correct? Yes, isn't she pregnant? She was uh, probably promoting pregnant. Lucy. I think, maybe. I think I think she didn't yeah. promote Lucy because she has a kid or about to have a kid or something. I guess that tells us how long we need to follow up on the news. But <laughs> and, um, po- the posters came out. The ones you care about, really. The poster, <laughs> right? They the look- gigantic poster with everybody fighting. You just spoiled it, man. It's supposed to be smaller posters, smaller posters, and then bigger poster. What What do you mean? They They go together. The, there were teaser posters released. Like it's basically just like, sections cut out of each. Yeah, it's right, pretty nice. cool though. What's so spoiling about that? 
I wanted the listeners to know that I don't know whatever <laughs> <laughs> because they already can't go online and spoil it themselves. Gotcha. Uh, that was pretty cool artwork. I mean, it wasn't actual, you know, footage or you know, like a still Photos. shot, yeah. but artistically, I mean, that that looks pretty epic. I mean, imagine that battle if it's really going to be pictured like that in the movie. That looks intense. That does look intense. Like, yeah, I don't want. I don't really want to see another downtown New York City battle. Again, I'd like to I see agree. it out, like in the it uh, looks like drawing. It looked like it was nowhere. in a valley or rocky place or something. And it looks very hopeless. Like, oh, yeah. everybody's getting like about to die. You know, everybody is about to die. I think I think the post looks terrible. Like, really? like, like from an actual artistic, you know, they they tried to be almost comic booky, already pan painted, mm-hmm. but using the real world faces and actors as models, and I think blending it in. Uh, lost like they, they try to meet in the middle like it should have been either real world shots kind of like the original like like a theatrical poster would look like or it should have just been a full blown comic book like I think like going for the middle they failed okay interesting interesting uh, so another thing about the panel is the fact of usually so last year I think it was or last that was last year that, or two years ago maybe or last year, I can't remember when it was, <laughs> that they had all the cast, you know, all the Avengers, you know, and, and then at the end, Loki showed up in costume, or was it Hiddleston? Was his uh, first name? Yeah. Tom, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. 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 So he shows up in full costume, you know, dressed up as Loki. And this year, they kind of did something similar, where at the end of it, they brought, uh, they brought, um, Roland. Uh, Josh Brolin <laughs> as uh, who, who was you know revealed to be playing Thanos, and he had the uh, the gauntlet of Infinity, uh, a phone really cheap. I, I, I really <laughs> wish they would have done a better job, but that was very very cool. He looked very uh, villain like in you know like the guy has played good guys, has played bad guys, has played just regular people, has played a president. And, you know, just, you know, the guy looks intimidating. He looks like a villain for a superhero movie. Which leads me to this is, I really hope he is more than just uh, just CGI voice. I really hope there's actual motion capture and facial expressions of the guy. Yeah, like, I mean, they may try to do what they did with Hulk. Like, they actually gave him Mark I Ruffalo's really face. So. I assume I really so. so. Yeah. I, I assume that Andy Serkis was coaching these guys. And then this will be Josh Brolin performance with a coat of purple computer. There was rumors that, that uh, Andy Serkis was hanging out with him, right? He is in the movie, confirmed. Who is really? He? Unknown. That, I, did, I didn't know that. That's the big I question. I didn't know that either. Who, who is I, Andy Serkis playing? If Ruffalo's playing Hulk, Brolin's playing Thanos, if Bentley's playing Vision, like who's left? Bethany. Bethany. Oh, we're not going to pick on him? For, <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> we gave him the right one. Dan Oss. <laughs> Gauntlet of Infinity. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just really like Paul Bittner. <laughs> uh, I mean, who's he going to play? I guess he can play Ultron. Jar Jar Binks. He can play Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to reunite the universes. So, I mean, Avengers looks great. Uh, another uh, big piece of that was Ant Man coming yeah. out. I you know Edgar was kind of excited about. Yeah, um. Ant Man was confirmed that they're going to start filming later this year. Paul Rudd is on board. Michael Douglas is on board. Uh, like, it looks good. Like, uh, I know that they were showing footage at Comic Con, and I'm jealous. I, I want to see it because Ant Man's not a very popular. Like, it's it, it's, it's, the... it's like a C or D level superhero. Although he does create Ultron, but not in this universe. But the balding guy from the first season of House of Cards. Oh, uh, right. uh, Corey, Corey Stoll. Corey Stoll, he's a, he's a, what, Yellow Jacket, is it? Yeah. Um, he's playing Yellow Jacket. That was confirmed. Uh, Evangeline Lilly is in this. Yeah, and she's playing Hank Pym's daughter. Yeah, that's cool. But she has a different last name, has yeah. announced, and then now that creates an even... Like, Chris is rubbing his head. Yeah, right? come on, come on, come on. Like, I gotta kill somebody here. Like, I, you know, I try not to like it to, like, oh man, that somehow is in the comics. Uh-huh. But I mean, this... This movie, this plot, like where they're going in this direction, like this is very 
very far, uh, very like so. Like as you told me on the character, I seen the character as part of the Avengers. I have no idea about his backstory. So Hank Pym is a founding member of the Avengers. Loki caused some mischief, and then Thor, Iron Man, Ant Man, and Wasp stopped him. So now you have Hank Pym, Ant Man being an old Michael Douglas. Okay, he's going to have Paul Rudd somehow steal the costume or get involved and beat Ant Man. Rumor speculation, which we don't like to comment on, but still, is that Evangeline and Lily, I probably pronounced her name wrong, um, <laughs> is going to play, uh, you know, uh, the daughter, and that the Wasp, Hank Pym's wife, died in a lab accident. So Wasp went from potentially being a female character in Avengers 1 during an early draft to getting killed off in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yellow mm-hmm. Jacket is an alternative identity that Hank Pym takes at one point in his career. And now he's going to be, like, the villain of the piece. Uh, so, I don't know. Like, just, like, as an entry-level point, you know, and I, and I want to see the product, but, like, I, you know, when Thor came out, everybody was like, oh, I don't know, this is Marvel's riskiest movie. It wasn't, you know, turned out mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah. When Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, that first show that came out, I was kind of like, I don't know about this. But now, like, as we get closer and as more footage, so I'm like, all right, this, you know, this is solid. I think Ant-Man is the riskiest that they've developed to a date. And not because it's Ant Man, but just because like all the backyard baseball, loss of directors, loss of producers, loss of I think of it's writers. the one most like, they are, before they even started shooting the movie. Like they have any, like they're just starting to shoot this and they are holding their ground to a July one, one year from like now release. And like this script is, is all over the place and I don't know. Been uh, rewritten twice already? This thing is wow. a development hat. And like I feel like they should reevaluate this. Can of, they pull a Pixar? <laughs> That's uh, so. I mean, what about this came out of Marvel Universe? Guardians of the Galaxy two got announced. As yeah, you same three, writer, three same years. Director. Yeah, three years from now. To, to me, this is more uh, great news than any review I could read. Um, when back, they, like, back in the day, already they know they have a winner. The first Avengers is what was that? Two thousand eleven? No. Or ten? Two thousand twelve. Twelve. No, it wasn't twelve. Yeah. First Avengers? Yeah, it wasn't that was long, long, long ago, yeah. Really? Yeah, because oh. we had uh, Avengers, Iron Man, Captain America. Those were three summers. Wow. So. So that, I mean, that's, if if they're, I don't know. Because yeah, I know they wanted, yeah. or at least the last I read, they were trying to, I guess it, there's nothing official anyway, but they wanted Avengers 3 to involve Thanos and the Guardians, but if the Guardians 2 is three years from now, like... Wonder what they're planning for Avengers three. Is it going to be after that? Is it going to be even longer? I think our answer. We're going to get our no. answers this weekend, man. The yeah. fact that there's going to be, you know, you know, we we had I guess somebody that, that that's you know know that somebody knows here I guess uh, the fact that they watched an early screening of the movie of Guardians of the Galaxy, but they withheld all the ending out you know the ending sequences. Yeah. Uh, and, and and that's been across the board. I think. Maybe that's they'll the feel like they'll feel like that people like them enough to just throw them into Avengers three without another Guardians of the Galaxy movie, perhaps. Oh, I mean, at the end of Avengers one, I thought he'd be in Avengers two, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, he turns, he's the last shot, and like, oh man, well, besides the shawarma, and you're like, yeah. oh, he's, gonna, <laughs> he's gonna show up in the sequel. I was surprised when they threw Ultron in here. What's I, What's next Marvel movie after uh, like after Guardians? Like, what's up next? Avengers. Year? Like, what's up next year though? Avengers Age of Ultron and Ant Man. And Ant Man. Oh, jeez. So they're introducing new characters. In, What's going in... on, Eddie? Welcome to the Nerd News <laughs> Podcast. They're introducing new characters, so I guess there could be a longer time before the next what Avengers. About, I mean, Marvel Universe. What about this? Is Marvel Cinematic Universe? Is there anything else Marvel coming out? Do we have any X Men next year? No, Doctor Strange is in the oh, works, yeah. probably for what 2016, 2017. Now, is Doctor Strange going to be? Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it will be. So that's the where Joaquin Phoenix is being rumored yeah. as the lead. Uh, for he's the, an for outstanding the, actor. Okay. So now and then we also have. Uh, um, that's all that we know for a fact. Okay. Yeah. Right. There's you know obviously there's going to be a Thor three at some point, Captain America three. Um, well, they've set a release date for Captain America three. Right. It's going to be so. Batman versus Superman. That's right. <laughs> Twenty sixteen. Wow. Crazy so. day. And then, I mean, there's the most heavily rumored one that hasn't been announced is the Black Panther. I'd imagine. You just saw them. You just saw them. Are you serious? 
That sounds cool. So, it did not disappoint. Overall, Marvel, again, went in there with really no nothing big. Nothing, no big announcements. No, you know, we're crazy, changing everything. Yeah. So, but they, they went in strong. You know, I think, you know, from a lot of people that I brought, you know, bloggers that I read about the, the Comic-Con, a lot of them claimed that they were, again, the winners of the uh, entire panels they're just so prepared like they, they have they have all their movies lined up it's like it's like watching a football game and watching like the better team win because they have better players and better game plan so that that's how I feel Marvel is up so much right now so on we, DC are we calling DC like the Brazil uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes, uh, yes exactly like uh, Denver Marvel, Broncos maybe <laughs> Marvel the, Mar- the Marvel is definitely Germany this year the Peyton Manning of the world <laughs> no, I mean they, they have everything set I mean, they they lost Edgar Wright, and they're still like, whatever. <laughs> we can still finish this movie. <laughs> and they haven't even started shooting. <laughs> Jeez. So moving on to uh, DC, uh, they released uh, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Uh, you know, I poo-poo on everything. So I'm going to let somebody else do that for once. Yeah. All right, so the initial reaction, you know, I think, you know, when, when the picture was released, you uh, sent it to all of us. And I happened to be, I think, in the car with uh, Drew and Edgar when this picture came out. Initially, I just thought it was a joke. <laughs> this thing, I, you know, first reaction, I'm like, this is wrong. They can't get this right. Damn you, Zack Snyder. Freaking <laughs> put some color in this damn movie. <laughs> and then, I, you know, the next comment that came out of my mouth is like, you know, if you know, if you were to show me that, you know, like they're rebooting uh, Xena, the, the Warrior Princess. I would have believed it. That is straight up the same costume, same color <laughs> scheme. She's fighting in Lava Planet. What the hell is this? <laughs> this is like, where is this movie taking place? We've seen a, a city top, some kind of garage, and now some lava place. She's supposed <laughs> to be from the Amazon. Okay, how many freaking volcanoes in the Amazon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there is any. <laughs> At um, least not active volcanoes. Add some color to this movie. This movie, you know, the only thing, and I'll keep saying it on record, the only thing that keeps me motivated in this movie is the fact that there is Batman. Uh, if there was no Batman in this movie, I would have already said, what? Well, there's always uh, the next Marvel movie. That can have a second. She's an Amazonian, but yes. she's from the Mysteria. Yeah. No men are allowed, so it's a mystical island. Okay. Yeah, not from the Amazon. <laughs> oh, she's not Brazilian. <laughs> I always thought Brazilian. she was from the Amazon too. Yeah, so. she's an Amazonian though, right? That's just what they call them. So. Yeah, okay. she was just raised by Amazon people, maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, if you guys ever watched like Justice League, the cartoon series, yes, I mean they like Superman and Batman were like the first people on uh, Themyscira ever. Like it was cool because it's like super hidden. Uh, I like the super. Uh, I'm right. uh, sorry. I like the cool. Wonder Woman. I liked it. I liked it a lot because it looked like real. It looked like a real suit of armor, which Let's is what she real. would wear. Gal, um, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. She she definitely was more intimidating looking than I expected. Agreed. She, uh, you know the skinny girl from Fast Five. I was like, oh, that's her. She fills out that costume much better than I thought. At first, when I saw it, I was kind of like, oh. But the more I look at it, I think it's good. I think that they are doing the best with what they have. I think that she's doing a really good job, you know, filling out the costume and posing. And but this, this is it, and this is my problem. But my problem, uh, uh, real quick, <laughs> go ahead. Is this is the first skimpy outfit we've seen in the modern day superhero universe? Storm, Jean Grey, Black Widow, Hit Girl, all get to wear full body suits. This is the first one that I can think of. Um, that is that is you know is wearing a skirt is wearing a bathing suit and high heel boots. I mean, Lady Sif had a real suit of armor, so I think that you know so they can just shoot her in the leg. <laughs> I mean, I just think that I think that I think that's why like it kind of looks off in some respects to me is because they are trying to just adhere strictly to the comic book, and that's why you're getting the Xena feel because instead of being willing to go a little outside the box, like you are kind of having this, uh, you know, sex sexy outfit. Instead this, of something more practical. This is the movie that you don't have to settle for. This is the, the you know, you got the biggest cast of superheroes. Before, you know, the Avenger movies, the Avengers and Marvel, in my experience, were secondhand. 
as yeah. compared to DC superheroes. And I think a lot of people can argue for that. They don't have to settle. Get this damn thing right. <laughs> they won't get to do it again. It'll be another 20, 30 years until we get to finally see somebody say, well, you know, that catastrophe of Zack Snyder was, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's all gone. Let's try to redo it the right way. Marvel did exactly it. They went for the bright colors. They went for the original outfits. Let's, this is not a movie that you need to get original on. I don't agree on the, you know, the whole let's, let's let Zack Snyder decide on which way we're going to do this. You, you know, he can't, you're going to mess it up. You know, he messed up, in my opinion, he messed up Superman already. Superman only, didn't have his red underwear on. Like, his his red underwear. Like right was just, I mean, I actually rewatched it, you know, sometime between the first podcast and here. I rewatched it, confirmed it again. I mean, this, the movie just moves very slowly. The plot is very weak. Stuff just happens. <laughs> And, and you know, like, go it's, dad. <laughs> it's, right. like, it's like, why didn't Joel like beam up with his wife's consciousness? I mean, like, he could have. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's just again, this just disappoint me. A costume, I but Memo, it's the first time Wonder Woman's ever been on film, like, and a, they like a, a huge what? movie, like a huge no. movie. And they like it's, it's it big, all. it's big, like it's a big. There's never been any other like Wonder Woman like super duper movie. This so is supposed I, to be I like it. Like, I like I think it. If, if anything, I don't think Linda Carter is so upset at you right now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like you know, like superhero movies. So you think a Modern. little kid, Modern. a little kid, you know, who's just getting into comics, you know, ten year old you sees this picture of Wonder Woman, and you're excited about that? Yeah, he is. Well, <laughs> he is really excited. About I like how it Wonder looks like it's real armor. Thirteen year old kid. <laughs> 13 year old I like how it looks really like real armor. That's it. It looks that's, like that's real my armor. Point. It looks like it's real armor. The best thing you sent me to follow up to that picture was, hey, by the way, here's a recolor of that. You know, somebody already in the internet worlds already went and recolored and added things. Epic. It did look better. Epic. <laughs> Epic to me. I think if the movie's good, I can get used to it. I mean, I mean, Superman, but that's a big if. Yeah. That's a big <laughs> if. Along with that, though, you know, the the the, uh, the big deal as part of their panel is everyone came on you know i guess they're 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 filming right now in london and they flew to san diego which to me makes no freaking sense they showed up the director talked for a little bit and then they brought uh ben affleck uh gal gadot and uh henry cavill and henry cavill thank you guys i'm terrible with names as you can see uh they brought him on they didn't say a word they just nodded waved and left uh, to me it's like again really guys <laughs> I mean, like who is the who is the PR person for DC right now or you know Warner Stop Brothers questions. <laughs> <laughs> look at them they're not as organized right. they're not as organized it feels like you know like exactly you know they just don't have their crap together they're just winging it you know I you know the, the biggest DC news that came out was the fact that they're there is there was a teaser trailer for that uh, the death of Superman lives documentary where they try to document the uh, backstory of the movie that all, all, almost was, which was the uh, Tim Burton uh, Superman movie starring Nicolas Cage and written by Kevin Smith. Watching <laughs> watching the evening with Kevin Smith, and I feel like yeah. that is more enjoyable than this documentary would probably be. Well, they're using part of it, and Kevin Smith is completely behind this thing. He loves money. <laughs> um, real quick, for uh, other movies, we're going to go through this. Whoa, whoa. We skipped this. Skipped what? The, 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 the setup that they did do there. I think the, <laughs> for, the, for the teaser trailer of Superman vs. Batman. Uh, do, I mean... Dawn of Justice. Oh, <laughs> Dawn of Justice. Dawn of Justice. I thought that, that, you know, I did went ahead and as compared to what you did, stop reading. I read the whole thing about the teaser. And if that is the case, the teaser to me looks, you know, compared to all the crap that I'm, you know, like saying bad about this movie, I thought the teaser idea to me sounds epic. And I really, really, really hope they get that right. Because that will just turn it around for me. I hope they get it right. I think singing in motion is going to be a big deal. Like, all we've seen are these still shots. Um, I think seeing an actual trailer of these characters move, 
is going to feel a lot uh, more important and have weight to it than everything we've seen so far. Do you think the fact that we haven't seen anything just yet, it might be a bad sign? No, it's 2016. It's, t- it's two years from now. I'm not worried about it. So next year's Comic Con is really when this thing is going to be. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll, they'll have wrapped up filming by then. I mean, I would expect to see an Age of Ultron trailer by now, though. So yeah, it comes out in May. They show up, you know, Robert Downey Jr. shows up with a suit and tie. Oh, this is, you know, the greatest thing that yeah. ever happened. So <laughs> they don't need that just yet. These other guys, they need it. They showed up, you know, with their hands in their pocket. <laughs> uh, so we have The Last of Us confirmed as a movie, which I thought it already was. Uh, this is a uh, PlayStation 3 game that got remastered for the PS4 out today. Uh, game of the generation as far as I'm concerned. Great story. I don't really care to see it in the movie because I feel like I already saw this story, so I'm going to say play it out again. Is that one page going to be in it? No. The, um, really? I don't, I don't know her name, but Arya Stark from Game of Thrones... Is going to be oh, the main girl. Cool. Looks like Ellen Page, doesn't she? She does, and Ellen yeah. Page isn't actually the girl. It's uh, Ashley Johnson. Who really? Plays. Yeah. That was Ellen Page. Ellen Page was in Beyond Two Souls, and she did all the voice capture and like. Oh, that's right. That's that. the one with William Defoe. Right. Okay, so different uh, different games. It's pretty cool that they're making you know out of video games. It's jumping over to now actually getting made into. Uh, Movies, so that's pretty pretty good. So, so we got a King Kong prequel and Godzilla sequel officially announced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so Godzilla, a little surprise. I mean, I guess that movie. It's from from some articles that I read. Apparently, it's somewhat of a cheap movie to make. As much CGI and as much stuff there is. Apparently that now is the price of CGI and small studios just wanting to make movies. Uh, it's going to allow them to make that movie quick. And I'm surprised that King Kong has a prequel. I'm like that was the biggest too. surprise of Comic Con. This was it's called Skull Island. Uh, what what is it going to be about? Is Peter Jackson behind this? I don't know. Not to Universal, mm-hmm. please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know who's behind it. Legendary it's... Pictures is 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 doing it, and the speculation is. I mean, Legendary Pictures did Godzilla as well. So the speculation is that they're, they're trying to set, set up their own universe to what? to get King Kong and right, Godzilla together. Tons of interest in this. Yeah, right. <laughs> the same thing happened wow. to me when I, I mean I, I I really like Peter Jackson's King Kong and it was and, okay. I mean so long. I'd be interested dude. to see a prequel, but I, I wouldn't expect it to be related to that. So I mean, I had somewhat of interest in a King Kong prequel, and when I read someone speculating about. Is and being introduced studio? into the Godzilla wow. universe, it's like, whoa, okay, okay. Because everyone's trying to do their own universe now, and yeah. Legendary's like, what do we have? Monsters, <laughs> let's go with it. Come on. That's pretty cool. No, that's a great connection. Yeah. I'm I am not going to go pee during the Godzilla <laughs> sequel. <That's laughs> I'm going to hold it. <laughs> uh, we have Star Trek Three with uh, Robert Orchie. Roberto. Roberto. Orca. Roberto. Orca. So he's directing it now. Um, this is his first directorial. Sorry, it would be his directorial it. debut. I wasn't going to say it, but yes, you're right. Well, he mentioned <laughs> and, that he's behind possibly the Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's producing Power Rangers remake now and, and helping writing. And we keep calling it a remake, and we already confirmed it. That's right, it's not, it's a, not remake. a remake. It's a uh, so a follow-up. It's a up. new Power Rangers movie. It's a new generation. <laughs> it's yeah. The next generation. Reboot. The next Re- generation. Reboot of sorts. Reboot. Yes. Yeah, I mean that's what it is. Reboot of Mighty Morphin. Um, Good for him. I mean, he's reignition. He's been behind the scenes for a long time. The crazy thing behind here is no more J.J. Abrams in the Star Trek universe. Mm. I know it was kind of. I'm sure he'll be a producer, but maybe, no bad robot but, will be I mean, involved. So, what's next nice for this J.J. Abrams guy? What's not no. next for him? I mean, if Star Wars, he's, if, I mean, if he's, he's, he's successful with Star Wars, he can do anything he wants. Maybe he'll do in the oh, he, he could probably already do whatever he wanted before that. That's a that, great, but. great idea. He's going to hang up his glasses. <laughs> hang up his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, I mean, I'm sure he has things that he's wanted to do. He can, yeah. he can do whatever. Maybe the Ghostbusters sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Finally get that thing made. Mm-hmm. I don't want it made. I don't want it made. Just keep it as it is. Well, going through that, and you know, another thing that I was, uh, uh, you know, kind of touched on the big, you know, Sony announced two movies. One of them was uh, Goosebumps, uh, with R.L. Stein as an actual character. 
in the Goosebumps story, the storyline being that you know all his monsters get loose, and he, you know, it's his job uh, to get all the monsters back into the stories. And R.L. Stein is played by Jack Black. So that was the premise. They showed pictures. Apparently, it was a very entertaining uh, panel at the con. And then the other one, which I got really excited about, one you know, recent movies, recent releases that was really cool was Wreck It Rap because they brought all that arcade video game, you know, mash of that world that had not been done before. Mm-hmm. This thing, uh, Pixels, is based on apparently aliens get, uh, you know, hold of an arcade machine from the 80s and they interpret it, you know, like a space invader, so to speak, where, you know, uh, spaceships are shooting aliens. They take that as a threat of war. So then they, you know, they're going to come and attack the uh, planet Earth where Kevin James is the president and his first... Uh, it's area. definitely a set in uh, Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> <laughs> set up, right? And then the whole setup is that he now needs to, you know, he's about to get attacked by aliens who, uh, you know, are, and, and his first thing is, well, who's going to defeat the aliens? Let me call my uh, elementary school arcade buddy, who used to be uh, awesome on the who's arcade. Who's Shaquille O'Neal? No, like, is he going to show up too? Is it Chris Sander, Rock or David Spade? I'm sure they'll be on it. So Adam Sandler is, uh, <laughs> it's the main uh, lead character, I guess, here. And then we have his supporting cast. Uh, Drew Barrymore <laughs> Peter Dinklage Peter yeah. Dinklage oh. this, this is pandering this is Adam Sandler pandering it's going to be here's, horrible here's probably. the deal though. here's the deal it has potential all the recent movies by Adam Sandler have been Happy Madison Productions this is not a Happy Madison pr- production this is Sony Pictures uh, I'm goodness. sure Happy Madison will put their sticker because it's Adam Sandler and I'm sure he signs it but Happy Madison is not part of the, the development if I remember correctly, the last Sony picture that uh, Adam Sandler did like that was uh, uh, Switch. Was okay. it Click? Click, I'm sorry, Switch. Click. Which was okay. It wasn't, yeah, that's tall. Yeah, I, it was I, okay. I like, yeah, I like it was it. okay. So it wasn't a complete flop as to say Blended. Blended did very well. <laughs> I mean, we looked at the... We looked at the box Where? office. Not it, very it well, did, but not it was well. It did better than some movies that we talked about. That's right. <laughs> but it completely uh, just... I don't trust Adam Sandler. I don't trust him. But <laughs> I cannot <laughs> wait to see actual footage. They confirmed Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and... Uh, no. no. Yes. Donkey Kong, <laughs> Dis- um, Nintendo's... <laughs> Donkey Kong Jr. Jr. Yes, Donkey Kong Jr. It's going to be the arcade 80s, version. 80s arcade versions. Apparently the aliens are bringing them right. along. To her. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go see this movie. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't trust Adam Sandler. The zookeeper was bad. I mean, he just keeps making these certain movies. He had nothing to do with zookeeper. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's James. James. Whatever. <laughs> I associate whatever. <laughs> but I'm not defending Adam movies? Sandler by any means. But no, it was uh, Mall Cop who had two movies, yeah. right? I don't know that that's ever. Paul Blart, Mall Cop. Moving on to everybody's favorite uh, discussion for the week, it's Drew giving us an update <laughs> on the Interstellar. Oh. Well, there was a Interstellar panel, or I guess uh, as a Warner Brothers panel, they they showcased a little bit of Interstellar, and they gave them a new trailer, um, which isn't online or anything, so we haven't seen it. Um, and they actually had Matthew McConaughey and Christopher Nolan show up. Uh, they talked for a little bit. I believe both of them, it was their first time at a Comic-Con. That's crazy, considering wow. that Christopher Nolan did all the time. Yeah. It wasn't just Nolan, yeah, I think it was Nolan's brother also in there in the panel. Ooh, uh, which I guess he had something to do with the, the Interstellar. I'm guessing he developed it. Well, they brother. they often work together. Yeah, he, right. he wrote the he wrote the screenplay originally. Jonathan Nolan. Jonathan, yeah. He wrote Interstellar for Steven he Spielberg, and then yeah, the Spielberg for, kept putting it off, putting it off. So it ended up in Christopher Nolan's hands. So from first reactions that I read about that panel and that trailer, apparently the trailer plays with people's minds even more than the original trailer that you have no idea what's going on. Apparently this new trailer, completely different storyline. People are like, they're the same movie? Because apparently, <laughs> other than the same characters, it portrays the movie way differently. Uh, so that's interesting choice. I mean, it's typical for Nolan mm-hmm. uh, to play with you. Even I guess you would want something movie. different for, for a Comic-Con audience. Anyway, I'm happy I, it comes out in November. Like we yeah. don't have to wait two years for this movie. He, I mean, they just talked. A, Matthew McConaughey talked a little bit about 
what, from what I read, what, his first meeting with Christopher Nolan, and Christopher Nolan talked about uh, his influences on the movie, you know, a lot of classic sci-fi. That yeah. was basically it. All right, all right. Edgar's right about this being a November movie. Like, we, we know surprisingly little for how soon this thing is about to release. And that's a good thing. Like, we know every dust of scene that's been filmed from <laughs> Star Wars Episode 7 already. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this thing's been pretty under wraps, all things considered. I think One trailer so far. Attention. I mean, yeah, there's I mean, not many yeah. Drews in the world. <laughs> you could go to a camp out <laughs> to try to get... You know, shot There's something. only one Drew in the world. That's right. All right. So this weekend uh, trailers, we got a or this weekend Christopher hates everything. <laughs> um, we got a new trailer for Tusk. Yes, so, Guillermo. So Kevin Smith next movie and the beginning of the uh, the uh, Cold the, North, Cold North, True North, the True North, North. True, yeah, North. True North trilogy. So. Um, I talked about this as the story uh, that he, it all got started by a podcast um, podcast episode that he did. It's finally a movie. Um, the trailer looks pretty awesome to me. I Being agree. Kevin it does Smith, look good. Kevin Smith fan. It looks awesome. The acting by, uh, especially particularly by Justin Long, looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> especially that one scene where he just falls off his chair. Yeah. I rewatched that scene like he was poisoned, man. What do you expect? He was he was, he was think, poisoned by the I team. Think that's part of it. I think he is asked as you know to overact for his particular role. Uh, cool trailer. It kind of tells the story of where this thing is going. Absolutely no reveal of what this human. Uh, uh, more uh, human mortars is going to look like. Um, no Johnny Depp was was in it, right? No, still mystery. Is it Johnny Depp or who's he going to play? Um, the cool thing for me, being a you know a, a listener of the podcast and uh, of Kevin Smith's Smartcast universe, is so many references that were in that uh, in that trailer. I mean, there's you know the radio stations, there's posters on the wall, on the wall of like episodes that he's done. Like he's he's got this recurring now somewhat of a theme which is like you know like true Canadian uh, heroes uh, where he's talked about different things of Canadian popular history that don't really make it down here which are great stories and that's where he's basing a lot of his you know ideas for uh, it's really cool to see him uh, back into something different and at the beginning I was kind of you know I'm not a big fan of horror and scary movies, so to speak. So I, I was in, I was like, man, you know, I'm not sure about this. But then, you know, the way the trailer got released, it seems like it's going to be, you know, not a true horror, let's scare you out of your chair, but it's, it's it looks like a, an, a fun movie. It looks like, it looks respectable. It looks a like little, a little more, um, Tongue in cheek than I expected. A little less twisted. Yes. But I don't want to die in Canada. Uh, I think I don't know. Michael Parks is the reason I want to see it, and, and he looked great. Michael so. Parks confirmed the dude deserves an Oscar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometime it's incredible how good of an actor, or how well he plays the Michael Parks, uh, you know, role. I think all his roles, what I've seen them, are somewhat similar. He just plays that character that he plays so well. I really hope he gets some recognition for this. And I guess just updated today, he just uh, this movie is also going to premiere in the uh, Toronto, uh, the Toronto uh, Film Festival, which was, I guess, twenty something years ago. The same film festival where Clerks got its first showing. That's cool. So that is right. like coming a full circle for Kevin Smith, uh, or he said, you know, he talks about it. So yeah, I mean, this movie looks dark. It definitely looks horror. This is more Red State Kevin Smith and not Clerks to Kevin Smith. Right. If you showed me this trailer, I would never have been able to guess Kevin Smith was the director associated with this, which, you know, could be a good thing or a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Hobbit, uh, Battle of the Five Armies. Got our first trailer for that. Um. I, 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 I say, I mean, I'm, I'm, de- I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I, the. The reason I'm just kind of apprehensive, I guess, is the same reason I didn't care too much for the first two Hobbit movies. Yeah. It was just because, you know, it's, it's heavy CG as compared to Lord of the Rings. You know, it's... I don't know. It it doesn't look any different to me. It's going to be okay to good, you know. It's more Hobbit. It, it was a good teaser trailer uh, as far as what they put together. Um, I thought the song 
at least for me because I listen to Lord of the Rings score a lot. They use the song uh, that Merry or Pippin, one of the two, sings to the King of Gondor in Return of the King. So like it really stood out to me and didn't. And it kind of took away from the trailer, but I don't know if you know, normal audiences are going to feel that way. I can't believe this trailer is just coming out. The movie comes out in December. Yeah, that's, we're in July. That's crazy too. The first this away. first footage from this movie. Maybe know. that's how it used to be, and now we're just so spoiled. Maybe that's how it used to be. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll go see it. Uh, not excited. I, you know, I have not seen this, the second Hobbit movie. What? Uh, that's this, why you're like, not excited. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, listen. I read the book. I know the original Hobbit. What what the deal is? Mm-hmm. I watched the the first movie, The Hobbit, and. It just didn't do it for me. Uh, I thought it was boring. I agree with Gamo. Alira wants to see these movies, so I see them. I'll see them in theaters. I don't care for them at this point. Like, they're just, they're long, they're drugged out. They are satires of themselves, practically, at this point. And it's just, looks to follow that trend still. I guess, and then also, I mean, I think we touched on it. The fact that this is, you know, the end of The Hobbit, and then a little bit more of the extra stuff that nobody really knows about. And nobody really knows about the, you know this battle and what really is going to be the outcome where the movie's going to end. Mm-hmm. So that to me is a little bit exciting, uh, intriguing. Intriguing. I feel like it doesn't have the weight of the other movies, like because like little, like Return of the King was like an Oscar winner. Um, it, like it was nominated for the most Oscar. Like it's it was nominated Oscar. for the most Oscars that year. This movie just seems like, uh, whatever. It's a happy movie. It, it's. Peter Jackson coming back for God knows why. <laughs> I mean, the, the stuff is material. The Hobbit is not Lord of the Rings, and they're trying to make this a huge epic again. Right. It was a journey. It was, it was a journey yeah. film. It was Wizard yeah. of Oz. And it was a kid's, a kid's yeah. book. I read it as a kid. I mean, The Hobbit was very kid's book. Definitely yeah. the easiest one to read out of all the freaking uh, Lord of the Rings books that are out there. So. Maybe it's because I've watched Lord of the Rings so much, but I can't name any of the Hobbit characters. Like, I know Bilbo. And I know Gandalf, but I don't know the Legolas, I guess. Thorin Oakenshield. They're yeah, they're interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. And, but the Lord of the Rings, like that, I, I relate to them more because I felt like they were heavier presence, like they're more gravitas, I guess. So we also got our first, like, real not teaser trailer, but footage for Hunger Games: The Mockingjay, yep. Part One. Another movie that comes out like <laughs> in a few months, and this is our first time looking at it. Uh, I think Julianne Moore looks pretty cool. Philip Seymour Hoffman, rest in peace. Like he's he's good in it. So out of the group here, who's read the books? I haven't yeah. read the books. No, no, I haven't. I have. So we got two. Uh, two that's two. good. Two and two. That's really good. Uh, as a reader of this book, the you know the first two teaser teasers of the teaser, you know the the, the prom the promo. <laughs> I thought those were better teaser trailers than this one. Uh, to me, this one is. Uh, doesn't say anything, doesn't reveal anything. The, you know, Katniss is uh, reappearing into the world. I wish it would have, you know, there's one particular scene in this that is going to be in this movie that it's like, you know, one of the most memorable sequences that are, will be, that, that are out of the book, which is, you know, you probably know what I'm talking about when she finally, when she records her own commercials. Yeah. You. you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I thought they were going to use that just based on where they were going with these teasers. Uh, which is, you know, I guess uh, that, well, that won't reveal anything, but it's like a response to the the Snow, uh, President Snow commercials that he's made. Cool. The propaganda she makes her own. I thought that was like, dude, they don't even have to think for the teaser trailer. I mean, or a trailer. Just make that scene be it and call it. Um, I'm still super excited about it. I cannot wait to see this. I hope, as compared to the books, Mockingjay proves me wrong because I thought all the books declined as they the more and more I got into them the quality of the story just declined even more oh. so I hope the movie kind of proves the opposite because so far I enjoyed the second movie way more than I enjoyed the first movie as compared to the book I enjoyed the first book way more than I enjoyed the second book so you're spot on I mean uh, you know, Stephanie Meyer I apologize if you're listening I you bought your books they were great Stephanie right. Meyer? Damn it. <laughs> Chris Peterson <laughs> read Twilight. Suzanne Collins. Suzanne Collins. But like, I apologize. That's the same part. Hang Stephanie on, Meyer. internet. Delete that. <laughs> Her? She doesn't have it in the, she doesn't have it in this voice. 
Like, it just end really abruptly and jarringly, and, you know, especially reading the second book, I had no idea how that actually ended. Like, I had to, like, kind of reread it a second time, because the, the character, like, the character, like, Second movie out. ends like that, too. I mean, perfect, so... Perfect I mean, ending to it, yes. I mean, so... Being nitpicky, this this trailer is is bad. It's a bad trailer. Hey, it, it wasn't a, it, it wasn't a teaser. It no. Trailer. They've already had two teasers. This is... No, this, this is, is their first theatrical trailer. trailer. The movie comes out in what three months, four months. I feel like the teaser trailer is not footage. Like it's like oh, like when they were building the Enterprise. That scene never happens in the movie. Mm-hmm. This is an act. I mean, this is actual footage. So it's just, this trailer, trailer felt incomplete. It it didn't feel like a teaser. It didn't feel like a theatrical trailer. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of has me worried that maybe the movie shouldn't have been split into two. Like this they don't the they don't have much for one. the first movie. You know? I'm reading the book. This move, this book should not be split into movies. I agree. Like this could easily be one movie, one more good movie. Yeah, very good movie. Maybe it run a little bit longer than the others, but it does not need to be four or five hours of footage compared to the others. So. Right. I think the second one. I really wish. I mean, after seeing the second movie, I really wish they would have made that a lot more elaborate than they did. There's a lot of themes, and I'm sure that's why they did end up making the third movie, splitting it into two parts. There's a lot of other material that completely was overlooked in the second, especially in the sec- out of the second book, that was overlooked and not used at all. That's very, very important into the, the backstory third, of the, the underground story. That's right, movement. The, the, the district, yeah. you know, the District 13. So that, 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 that's, I think, why they, they made that choice to split it. And I really do hope, now that they have the chance to split it, that they go and cover I mean, they got sword material. Go and use everything. Don't leave any, you know, any stones uh, unturned at this point. So. We also were treated to Mad Max Fury Road trailer, which, real quick, I feel like those words should be reversed. I think it should be Mad Max Road Fury. <laughs> Road like, Fury. Fe- like, anyway, uh, for me, this trailer looks like this movie is trying way too hard. It should just be an action movie. It almost feels like it has, like, it's trying to have these quiet pieces, this struggle of Tom Hardy and you know, who plays Mad Max and you know you have uh, some scenes of uh, this group of girl bandits all wearing all white and you know these like kind of artistic shots this should be a dumb action movie <laughs> it is trying way too hard this is going to be the desert version of Waterworld <laughs> I think I, I I'm the opposite of Chris I really like this trailer I think it was well put together as far as the music and the footage goes. Um, good editing. But I, I, the artistic feel, I noticed that too, and, and it kind of feels like a reference to a more, more um, 70s type of film. When you got like all the 70s car movies, and I think Mad Max might be late 70s, or like the original one. Like very late 70s. And um, But I've, I've never seen any of the Mad Max movies, and yeah, this one's got me interested. I none of us has seen I have, yeah. I have not yeah. seen... I have not seen For me, all. this has got me, got me uh, interested. when the first Mad Max came out. Yeah, and it's, and it's, um, um, it's from the original creator who did all three, who directed all three of the first ones. So that's a positive. He, he knows... He's, he's been there. He you know, he's but is that good, though? That the, the guy who made the movies... I mean, no, not always. I it. mean, we saw what George Lucas did with Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I thought it looked good. I'm, and um, there's one moment in the trailer that made me think, like, oh, they're going to try and put too much Hollywood into this. And it was just Tom Hardy looking out the window and giving a thumbs up to Charlize Theron or whoever. You know, I was like, oh, they're, they're but putting that there. When is this movie getting released? Sometime 2015. 2015, next summer. year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. is it a summer movie? Most likely, yeah. I think it's going to be, I can, I'm, you know, are we going on record to calling it the worst movie of 2015? <laughs> Jupiter this Ascending is, comes out 2015. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. What's that? Jupiter Ascending <laughs> comes out 2015. Oh, God. That's a plus of the two. But it's not a summer release. Yeah. Well, well, you Mad can say Max, summer. Mad Max. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if audiences hey, hey, are hey. even going to, like, notice this come out. No. Hey, like, hey, that's, hey. that's what I fear. Failure. I mean, who's been waiting for this movie? No one. Who's been waiting for the Ghostbusters 3 movie? Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I didn't spark any interest for me. It actually did the opposite. I think I they're trying to do a, try and watch a throwback. Movies. Nah, I'll watch it. I, I, I thought the trailer good. I like the music. little CG heavy uh, in what they showed. 
as far as like the dust storm and all that. But yeah, it's gonna be too, too difficult to follow. There's cars flying everywhere, things flying. You know, they're throwing stuff out of cars. The cars are throwing themselves at each other. Like, no, not not even. But here's something that. interesting: is that they like mention the from mastermind George Miller, who, who's the guy who directed the first three. But I looked him up after I saw that trailer, and he's also the director of Happy Feet and Happy Feet Two. <laughs> so I was Are like, you this is the mastermind George Miller. Is so. it the same George Miller? Yeah, definitely. Wow, I like. Uh, sorry, no. I mean, I liked it. It, it looks. I, I am curious to see the source material now because I know it has Mel Gibson. I know it's like Mad, like Mad Max. Yeah, why not? My thing is, uh, real quick, Tom Hardy at one point puts on a mask in the trailer. And nobody <laughs> cared about him until he put on a mask. <laughs> so, another trailer that came out uh, was for Sin City 2. Oh, buddy. Um, I love Sin City. I'm happy to see that Sin City 2 trailer is coming out. The movie comes out in just around the corner, like August... Uh, um, Hang on, uh, August twenty first. Yeah, it's just a couple weeks, a few weeks. Uh, so the movie's coming out soon. I can't wait for it. The extended trailer got released. The red band. It looks great. I can't wait for it. Um, this was another well edited trailer. As far as you know, music. And I like the goes. music. Uh, I Shazam the song that they were playing, and I liked it. Like I liked every single part of it. This is this is a movie where they have so many characters, and not just you know. Two main, you know, big actors. They have everybody who's a main character in this movie. It's a somebody actor, and this trailer does such a good job of balancing everybody. Granted, it was two minutes and something extended trailer. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it was so so cool. I, you know, I have not been. You know, I liked the first the first movie. Uh, it wasn't too crazy about it. I love Robert Rodriguez as a director. Um, and you know, and I think last time we already talked about this. I wasn't really. You know, that was just kind of like blah about it. This trailer made me reassess that I really, really want to see. Yeah, this movie I agree. Back. It reignited my interest. Yeah, too, the bad first Michael, too bad Michael Clark Duncan died. Yeah. Like the the guy that replaced him doesn't have that same voice. <laughs> you know, like the guy with the golden eyeball. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, he won't be too major of a too character. Too bad Clive Owen didn't come back either. Yeah. That would have been nice. I love Clive. They could still surprise you with that in the end. Maybe. Sometimes less is more. In this trailer. One gave away a lot, and it shows that this movie is going for too much. It is sex and boobs and nakedness and violence. And yes, like, that's okay. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, like, this, 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 Absolutely. this movie might as well be like Machete Three for how like ridiculous and over the top <sighs> and like all their crazy like slow mo weird shots and like th- this movie is the epitome of way too stylized. This is too stylized for its own good. It is trying too hard to be cool and edgy and I have absolutely no interest in seeing this at this point oh, no. sad <laughs> uh, that was your free ticket movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, Machete 2 was really bad like it, Machete 2 got away from them uh, like it, I just watched that I, I wouldn't say it was really bad but maybe because Ed, hearing that from Edgar first kind of lowered my expectations but I like the like corniness really too. got away. Like the machete, the first machete was first machete. It, 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 it was it was not great. like I liked it. The second machete got away from them. I hope Sin City Two doesn't get away from them. Mm-hmm. This is a movie that took them a while to make. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, so the first movie was decade. released in two thousand four. Yeah, five, five, so two thousand four, five. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was released a while ago, and. I, and it was always in talks about the Dame to kill, and then Angelina Jolie was attached to it, and then Johnny Depp was supposed to be in t- like. So many names attached to this. But they did the tourist. So <laughs> yeah, they did the tourist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. August uh, 22nd. Yeah. All right. Well, a lot came out of Comic-Con. We couldn't cover it all here. Uh, if we missed your guys' favorite story, definitely reach out to us, uh, either by emailing us at nerdexp at gmail.com or on Twitter. I am at, wait for it, nerdexp. I uh, changed my Twitter handle, so if you listen to an old episode, you might hear uh, something different. Wait, you changed it? Yeah. It's not at Nerdy XP anymore? It's oh, at Nerdy XP. It, it, it used to be at Christophsic Guy. Oh, oh. oh Don't come you listen to our episodes? No, too. but I, 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 I've always known it as at like, Nerdy XP. It's to go along with our new logo. So. That's right. That was big enough. <laughs> we should have started with that. We got a new logo. Awesome logo. Uh so definitely check us out on Facebook then uh, to, to really see the logo and definitely nerdyxp.com. 
Yeah, so nerdyxp.com for, for articles. Uh, all the podcasts post there. You can also get it off of iTunes. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Uh, go ahead and join that. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, you know, not just my opinions. You can also follow Edgar. At. Um, I just want to I just want to say something real quick. Chris does a really like great job on the website, and let's not take away from that. Uh, this podcast is possible because of the website. So go ahead and like please go to nerdyxp.com, read about the top five sidekicks because Chris does a lot of like Lost. you do a lot of research yeah. into it, and it's and this is just an extension of it. So go to the website, enjoy his content. Uh, he does a really nice job at it. Thank you. Um, you can follow me at uh, at Edgar E D G A R E X eighty six. Um, like I mentioned, I do a lot of retweets. <laughs> Sports mainly, and I barely tweet at <laughs> World is Square Backwards dot com. Find them one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow Gamera if you see him behind him in line. That's right. Oh, so, we'll bring or, it back. or if he cuts you off in traffic, <laughs> <laughs> you can follow him with uh, Fury Road. <laughs> <laughs> Not well, memo. <laughs> thank you, Edgar. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Guillermo. Definitely appreciate you guys, as always. And thank you, listeners, uh, for listening and uh, always be part of the show. I hope that you guys enjoyed this week's discussion, and this helps you level up your nerd IQ.